Do you remember the COVID time? It was a game changer. See, this was the marketplace where it all happened and this is our coronavirus hiding somewhere and this guy out here on the scooty happens to be the first infected person. Now, he interacted with quite many people and says some of them happened to travel abroad and within months, the pandemic happened, the virus spread pan world. Now, there were social norms, there were uh, herd immunity, vaccination, that kind of brought termination to this virus. So in this virus, we can say there was an initiation, a propagation and then termination of the coronavirus. Similar thing is going to happen in halogenation. Now, what is halogenation? Say this hydrogen out here, if I replace this hydrogen with a chlorine, right? So halogen has come at the place of hydrogen, right? So this, can I say is halogenation? Hydrogen has been substituted by a chlorine. So this is a substitution reaction where a chlorine has substituted one hydrogen, right? Now, Say the agenda of this halogenation reaction was to get one hydrogen be replaced by one chlorine, right? And what we took was Cl2 in the presence of light or H nu or sunlight or UV, ultraviolet rays. So monochloro product was our agenda. What we observed was not just monochloro, but a dichloromethane a trichloromethane, a tetrachloromethane were also formed. And to our wonder, this molecule, ethane, also got formed. See, we were doing halogenation and we got ethane. This looks weird, right? Now we'll come back to why is this ethane getting formed. First, let's just decode the mystery around the multiple halogen products that we are getting. And for that, we would have to dive into the reagent that we are using. So if you see, we're using chlorine in the presence of H nu or UV. Now, this is going to do something different. H nu or UV or in fact heat. If I give you any of these, so this reaction of halogenation takes place either in the presence of heat or light, sunlight, H nu or in the presence of UV. Now the question is, what are these reaction conditions going to do? Now, these reaction conditions will help in doing homolysis, which is nothing but you can think of it like it will help in breaking the bond. Now, breaking the bond in a special way, such a way that if we have two elements, every element gets its shared electron, right? So, we have two options here. We are throwing this UV, let's say, on methane and chlorine. So methane molecule and chlorine molecule. We have two molecules here. Two possibilities that means either this homolysis can happen or this homolysis can happen. Now out of carbon, hydrogen and chlorine, chlorine, which bond will easily undergo lysis, will easily break? The answer lies in bond dissociation energy. So bond dissociation energy, if you remember, it is the amount of energy required to break the bond, to cleave the bond in such a way that this bond actually is broken in such a way that every element gets its shared electron, right? So we are going to actually make free radicals using bond dissociation energy. Now, whichever is easier will happen first. Here we have 243 kilojoule per mole and here we have 413 kilojoule per mole. So clearly, bond dissociation energy is lower with Cl2. So this molecule where if you check the electronegativity is same for both the elements, chlorine and chlorine, they're the same atoms in the molecule. But here carbon and hydrogen has an electronegativity difference, making this bond cleave not so easily. 413 kilojoule per mole is quite high energy. So which one is weaker? Yeah, the Cl2 bond is going to break such that we're going to get the Cl free radical. So let's just understand what are these free radicals before we see what's going on. What's the reaction looking like? So what are these free radicals? They are, how is it forming? It is being formed from the homolytic cleavage, right? Which we're calling as homolysis. 
Now, the molecular species which contain an unpaired electron. So, if you see this chlorine, it has an unpaired electron. So, if you count its total pair of electrons, so it will have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. So, odd electrons are there. Now, such species are electron deficient and of course, they are not just electron deficient, they are highly, highly unstable and reactive. In fact, you are going to see that they are going to create havoc in our reaction. Why am I saying havoc? You will soon see. So, halogenation proceeds via free radical substitution. We get some free radical and there is substitution that is going to take place. We have understood that. Now, how is it related to this initiation, propagation, termination? For that, let's see what happens when you put UV on chlorine and methane. So, we saw that once we have thrown this UV on chlorine and methane, it is chlorine molecule which is going to undergo homolysis, giving you the chlorine free radical, right? You are not going to get the CH3 free radical, like this homolysis is not going to happen, right? Because at first go, the easier bond, the weaker bond is going to break. Now, once chlorine free radicals are formed, now there are no restrictions. Now the restrictions are over. It is not about now high or low bond dissociation enthalpy because chlorine free radicals, like I said, are going to now create havoc. The free radicals once formed are going to create havoc. Now the one who is not willing to even form free radical will have to surrender in front of the chlorine free radical. So next starts the propagation. So, chlorine free radical now can come in contact with a methane. So, this was our starting material, our substrate. We started with methane and we started with chlorine, but it was chlorine that underwent homolysis to give chlorine free radical. Now, this chlorine free radical is reacting with a methane to give you a methyl free radical and HCl. So, here you get a methyl free radical which can further react with chlorine molecule to give you methyl chloride and chlorine free radical. Now, there are a few questions that can come in your mind. Why not this chlorine free radical react with another chlorine free radical to give you Cl2? Well, guess what? Even this possibility happens. When it comes to free radicals, name a possibility and it can happen. Even this methyl free radical can come in contact with another methyl free radical to form, guess what, ethane. So, all the possibilities are possible, right? Because once the free radicals are formed, now the ones which are not willing to form free radical will also have to surrender and form free radical. So, if you see here, methyl free radical and chlorine free radical, the perfect ingredients required to make a monochloromethane has been formed. But, guess what? This chlorine free radical, the moment it is formed, can react with another methane and can give you a methyl radical and that methyl radical can react with another chlorine molecule to give you methyl chlorine and chlorine free radical. So, it's kind of like a chain reaction begins. This methyl free radical, there is more chlorine, there is methyl chloride being formed, there is chlorine free radical reacting again. So, it's a chain reaction that begins. Now, mind you, there are other side reactions at play as well. Now, this methyl chloride, how about the possibility, the probability of it reacting with another chlorine free radical? That can also happen. Mind you, it is all about different possibilities. When it is about the radicals, they are going to create havoc and will make the neutral molecules also form a free radical. So, check. What you get is CH2Cl free radical, which can combine with another chlorine molecule. Now, this is now a free radical. So, it can make a chlorine molecule, which is all set, all ready to actually form a free radical, such that you end up getting dichloromethane. Now, this can also happen that a dichloromethane reacts with another chlorine free radical to form CHCl2 free radical and HCl. Now, this free radical can combine with another chlorine molecules. So, after all, it's a free radical and chlorine free radicals are easily formed. So, you can get chloroform CHCl3 trichloromethane. Now, if you see this, trichloromethane can also react with another chlorine free radical to give you CCl3 free radical, which can further react with chlorine molecule to give you carbon tetrachloride. Now, there are quite a lot of products being formed. Let's see. So, 
in this step to itself we have a methyl chloride a ch2cl2 a chcl3 and ccl4 we have all different substituted halo products now we have to bring an end to all this which is happening so what is the possibility of the termination now that the free radicals gets consumed in the course of reaction a chlorine free radical may combine with another chlorine free radical to give you cl2 molecule a methyl free radical combines with a methyl free radical to give you ethane and a methyl free radical can come in contact with a chlorine free radical to give you methyl chloride so a radical coupling termination because the radicals have decided to couple together what is happening termination is happening there are no free radicals left in fact we can also add some inhibitors from outside to actually bring in end to this particular reaction this entire free radical substitution so just like how a vaccine helped in bringing an end yes inhibitor can also help here like an oxygen but more about it going ahead right now we can see we have multiple products coming up and we also got our reason why ethane is getting formed so you can see it as a part of a termination reaction here but if i just wanted chloromethane okay my agenda was to produce just the chloromethane do you understand we have ended up getting so many different products so many different products so do you think chloromethane is going to be formed in high yield no right so if i ask you how much would you rate this method of preparation of haloalkane what would you rate huh how many stars well turns out we are going to give just one star to it as multiple multiple products are getting formed resulting in poor yields of the desired product chloromethane in our case right